time exposures, also known as long exposures, are all kinds of fun to do. Think of the camera sensor as a blank canvas. And as the shutter is open, light from the scene is going to strike the canvas, creating the digital image. Seems pretty straightforward. And then the camera is, the image is going to be transferred to the card, and the canvas is blank again. So a creatively correct time exposure is going to capture that motion blur and stationary objects in sharp focus and paint the picture. If the subject moves too fast for the shutter speed selected, that subject will have kind of a ghost-like appearance or not be recorded at all. And the objective is to find the creatively correct shutter speed that captures the motion blur and a stationary object that's in sharp focus to provide some context. So what do you need to pull off this assignment? Step one, you need dark. That seems pretty obvious, but we're gonna be working with exposure times of longer than two full seconds. And you simply can't do this in bright daylight. You're gonna need a tripod. Part of the assignment is to have the background of the image to be in sharp focus. So you're gonna to have to have a tripod for this one. A cable release or a remote is handy so that you can separate the vibration of your hand tripping the shutter from the camera as it's taking the picture. Not necessary, but handy. Some starting spots. Pick the sharpness sweet spot of your lens, all else being equal. You're going to be there for a while, so you probably don't need to be wide open. Start two, three stops down. Maybe f8, f11. Long shutter speeds are okay. In fact, they, the assignment must be shot at two seconds or longer. And most cameras have a, have a scale that goes to 30 seconds, longer than 30 seconds. And you'll use the B setting for bulb. And the shutter is open as long as you want to hold the lens, the, the shutter release down. <clears throat> hold the camera steady. Use a tripod, or as I call it, a rock pod. You know, brace your camera on whatever's handy if you don't have a tripod. Try different settings. You'll get surprises with longer or shorter shutter speeds of the same subject. Remember to fill the frame. Have something going on in the whole frame. Um, often with time exposures, um, things will move through the frame that are obvious as you're standing there, and they won't re reproduce on the, on the image, and you'll have lots of blank areas. Time exposures can let you see things a little differently at night. For example, light has different colors. And looking at this photo, we can see the color of the light on the outside of Moby Arena is different than the color of the light inside of Moby Arena. And that's different than the color of the street lights and the car lights and the glow in the sky. And all of that gives you a much different looking image of Moby Arena and the and the IM fields than you would see it, for example, noon. Here's a pre-dawn shot of Denver. Okay, the sun's not even up yet, but we've got a, a little bit of glow in the eastern sky that's just lighting up the glass on those buildings. Here's dusk again down in Old Town. We get a blue sky. We've set our white balance to reproduce the lights inside the shops as fairly neutral, uh, and that is causing the, the sky to go super blue. Here's a fun Christmas picture during a long exposure. I held, and about halfway through the image, I cranked the focus so that it was, the lights were blurred. So you've got a sharp image inside of a blurry image. You can do a zoom effect. You got to use a really slow shutter speed and a tripod again. And then during the exposure, smoothly turn the zoom ring from wide to telephoto. And remember that zoom effect is going to be centered within the frame. So allow for that in your composition. In this case, the student didn't zoom um, smoothly and evenly. He paused the lens at several stops along the way. So, so that the letters had a chance to render on the, on the picture. And you get the step effect. Time exposure lets you capture motion. Here's a pan, or you could do a long exposure of, of a moving subject, for example, drummers. Carnival rides at dusk make for beautiful time exposures. 
If you're going to do headlights and taillights and car streaks, again, be sure to have something to fill the frame. You'll notice in this image, you don't see the cars and trucks, which were occupying some of the viewfinder as, you, as the photographer was setting it up. Also notice it's very dark out there on the street. And the photographer has used a little bit of a flash to cause their subject to show up in the image. Again, fill the frame with something going on. And here's what happens if you don't allow for the fact you're not going to see the cars. They were pretty obvious in this picture as they drove by, but the only thing that really rendered were the headlights and the taillights. So it's it's merely some some long skinny streaks. Here's long exposures with water again, a 60th of a second on the left, and we have moderately sharp water. Three full seconds on the right, and the water is very smooth and very silky, a very different looking effect in a different looking picture. Here's the same thing, same concept in at the fountain in Old Town. This is a 30 second exposure. And to get that, she stopped down to F22. Notice the stars around the lights are very pronounced, and that's an effect of the small aperture. Maya had, had her roommate stand in front of the, the, the white wall, raise her arms, but again, stop them at several points along the way. So her torso is fairly sharp because it didn't move much. And the arms are somewhat ghosted uh, so that we get the, the, the multiple exposure effect. You can paint with the light by leaving the shutter open for a long time and using a moving light to paint in to a static subject. Sometimes that's something like architecture. So for example, here, uh, a, we used a flashlight to illuminate the name on the building and, and illuminate the top part of those louvers just to put some detail up there. Or you can have your subject stand still and move the lights around your subject to literally paint streaks into the image. Some people use their phone. Some people use a flashlight. You could use Christmas tree lights. It's up to your imagination. And so long as the person moving the light keeps moving and never stands still, they won't show up in the picture. Long exposures are used a lot with architecture and buildings with lots of glass. They photograph very well at twilight. You're gonna start after sunset, after the sun is down, and you're gonna shoot until it's dark. So set up camp, you're gonna be there maybe 30 or 40 minutes. At some point, the inside lights will balance with that outside twilight, and that's kind of your sweet spot. That happens fairly quickly, so kind of be paying attention and be ready for it to happen. There is a separate video on this subject in Canvas. But we can see on the left, the inside and outside lights balance pretty well. By the time we get to the right picture, it's, it's a picture of the inside. But by doing this at dusk, we get some light and some detail, both outside the building and up in the sky. So it's not simply a silhouette. Astrophotography or sky, night sky photography. Use a wide angle lens, use manual exposure. You're probably gonna be working at a fairly high ISO on this one. Set your aperture to wide open, and you're gonna start with a shutter speed of 10 to 20 seconds. You'll also wanna use manual focus on this one. Your camera's gonna have a lot of trouble focusing on just the stars. So here's 20 seconds uh, at F8, uh, shot from a porch. Be sure that you're sitting on a, on a solid support surface for that tripod. If somebody were to walk on this deck, you would have blurry pictures. If you look really closely at the stars, they're starting to move because the shutter was open long enough to actually capture the rotation of the Earth relative to those pointy stars. 20 seconds is a bit long for most star exposures. 15 seconds was kind of the limit, and it depends a little bit on what lens you use. You can get away with longer exposures with wider angle lenses. This was a 16 millimeter lens, 
So a 15 second exposure worked, but notice that we're at ISO 12,000. Fireworks are a fun long exposure. Remember you're photographing a light source, okay? So you can get away with a low ISO, maybe 100, maybe 200. Again, it's a light source, so you don't need to be wide open for this one, F8, F16. Again, pick a sharp aperture. If the ground is in the photo, pick a shutter speed that's gonna underexpose the ground a little bit, but definitely show it and give it some context. If it's just the sky, as you leave the shutter speed open longer, you'll get several bursts in the frame. How long do you leave it open? How many bursts do you want? Remember that those bursts will overlap each other and build up brightness on the image. And if you leave it open too long, you'll just have a white blur because they will overlap. Good luck with this one, have some fun with it. 